what sort of legal case does the government have against BP? Can the president force the company to do what it is he says he wants it to do? Michael Juarez, the Stanford law professor, he joins us now to talk about the administration's options uh, to enforce this. Uh, Michael, start us off here with the escrow account. How can the president, quote unquote, inform BP executives that they're going to do this before he actually met with them today? Well, the president doesn't actually have any legal authority to force BP to set up an escrow account, to force it to use some sort of third party to settle claims. But he does have substantial leverage, other types of legal leverage that he can apply to BP to try to force them to accept that option. Like, it's um, such as what? I mean, we know, like, the Pentagon has, what, like, $2 billion worth of contracts. They consume a lot of jet fuel from BP. There are other government programs here. But would the government really use those as leverage at this point? Well, one option, there are three options the government has. One is to impose the maximum civil fine under the Clean Water Act that they, they could under the law, which could be as large as or larger than $10 billion. Um, Another option would be to bar BP from government contracting. That's called debarment um, under U.S. law. That might hurt the government as much as it hurts BP in the sense that the government is dependent on BP, for instance, for its military jet fuel. Right. Um, another option would be to take away BP's status as an operator under mineral management service regulation. That would prevent BP from operating its oil and gas wells in the Gulf and would force BP to bring, in, bring on another partner who would probably capture the lion's share of the profits from those wells, but who could qualify as an operator under but, MMS guidelines. But that brings you back to the greater economic question out there is how do you take away jobs? Yes, you'll, you'll win in terms of putting pressure on the company, but the company still employs Americans in the Gulf. Do you want to do that? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so I think the government has to walk a fine line between punishing the company for wrongdoing, apparently uh, in the administration's view, recklessness, um, while at the same time not harming the broader economy and, and also our national security um, in terms of the role that BP pl plays in supplying the military with uh, fuel. Talk it's to a me, balance. Talk to me about the, the term used last night by the president, reckless, when he described BP. Is that code for criminal case, and is the creation of an escrow account a way around a criminal case? Well, it certainly seems to be the case that the view of the government, the emerging view of the government, is that BP has lacks a, lacks a culture of safety, and that this accident was the result of uh, poor management decisions rather than um, bad luck. Um, in that circumstance, there are criminal and and civil penalties that are available to the government, but but but. Actually accomplishing those objectives would take years. BP would likely um, oppose them vigorously in court. I think the Valdez disaster is a great example where really the, the yeah. final settlement for the Valdez victims happened a couple of years ago in a Supreme Court in their in a Supreme Court case. And so there rather than go through that lengthy process, I think the administration would like to sort of short circuit it, use the leverage they have now, um, mm -hmm. and to force BP to pay sooner rather than later. And an escrow account means... would be a faster way to get that money in the pockets of the victims. Thank you for walking Precisely. us through the, the legal options here uh, and the case being made. Professor Wara joining us this morning from Stanford Law School. Stay with us when we come back. And